Hello Internet and welcome to another Star Citizen video with Haverside. Today we are talking about mining, a very popular activity within Star Citizen. We will be discussing how to do it, the ship progression you will take and more with the aim of providing you with the guidance on how to have the best start in Star Citizen with your mining career. By the end of it, you'll have enough information to get started with your mining career. So have you ever wanted to mine in Star Citizen? Or perhaps you are new and simply want to know how to do it and how to make money? If so, then join me as we get right into it as I show you how to have the best start in Star Citizen as a miner. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome Citizen! If you are new to Star Citizen and you haven't learned the basics then I highly recommend you do before watching this video and putting the process into action. You can watch my new player tutorial guide in the playlist link above. If you haven't already, do be sure to enter my competition at this time that is giving away a C8R Pisces Rescue with code blue plane and lifetime insurance. Links are in the description on information on how to enter and win that reward. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for future updates and giveaways that we may do in the future. Mining in Star Citizen currently is fairly linear in its design, with a distinct and clear path for your progression. Everyone can mine and no ship is required to do it. You can literally grab a multi-tool and a mining attachment, head over to any moon, find a cave, or well, literally just any planet or moon that has deposits on it for hand mining and literally start mining that is it but let's be honest here whilst hand mining is a thing most usually people avoid it it's just something people avoid altogether it's slow and picking up those gems once you've cracked a deposit can be frustratingly annoying as it's literally a one crystal one pickup at a time for reference, cracking is the term of we use in mining when we've cracked a rock. So you've cracked or you are cracking something so you can break it down into a material so you can collect it for profit. But with regards to hand mining, honestly, it's really not even needed and we won't be covering it in this guide as we like to be as efficient as possible. Next up in the mining progression is the Grey Cat Rock, otherwise known as the Remote Ore Collector or Rock for short, which is a single seat mining ground vehicle. There is a DS version of this as well, which allows two people to play together, one being the driver and one being the miner, but we're just focusing on the Grey Cat Rock here. This can mine deposits on a moon that the hand tool is unable to do, and it also has a built-in extraction laser, so you literally don't need to go and pick up the gems manually. You can just turn on the extractor and it will start sucking those gems in. And this is the second vehicle in the mining progression tree. You will however require a ship to transport the rock as it is a ground vehicle and most people will commonly use the cutlass black but you can use other ships but the cutlass is the preferred new player tool but purely on the basis it can be rented so you don't need a large upfront amount of cash to purchase it. After the rock is the next miner, the Prospector, and it's many players' preferred mining ship. And it will likely be your ultimate pick of miner out of the two mining ships that are currently available. The Prospector is a single seat ship capable of mining quantanium and other deposits and can really earn you some mean cash. How does 250,000 a trip sound? Yep, well, that is what this ship can do. And not just that, all you gotta do is find the deposits, mine it, crack them, and suck up the materials. And that is it, you've earned some cash. Lastly, at this time, it, the final ship in the progression tree is the Mole, which is a multi-crew mining ship that is aimed at crew gameplay, and it comes with three big mining lasers, though you can only use one at a time, one per player. This ship is entirely usable solo, though this is ultimately a personal preference as there is some moving around to mine solo as you cannot mine like the Prospector from the pilot seat. It is a little bit more advanced in its usage so we're not covering it in this guide and it's not even needed but should you like to learn about flying the mole solo and its benefits then check out the link above. There are other ships in the development pipeline that will add to the ships of mining. Like the unnamed ship which was voted for in a pick a ship challenge at the 2022 Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, which will be made by Robert Space Industries, or RSI, and will bridge the gap between the Mole and the Orion Capital Miner. What this new unannounced ship will be is anyone's guess, as we don't even have the Orion yet, so watch out for that one. I personally cannot wait for the Orion, which is a capital mining ship manufactured by Robert Space Industries, and it is designed to be a mobile mining platform that has an extensive storage for resources, drone docks, and an on 
inflatable finery, which allows the ship to be operated alone for large-scale mining operations without the need of support vessels. It sounds awesome, and I hope it releases sometime soon, because I just want to solo that beast. Anyway, enough imagination, let's get right down to mining right now. So step one in our preparation steps is to get some starting capital. So we're going to run the unauthorized surveillance detected mission twice. This mission is accepted under the mercenary tab of your Moby Grass contracts window, and it will award 20,000 AUEC each time you complete it. It takes roughly five to ten minutes to complete it, if that. But it involves us flying over to the target location, which is a comma rate around a planet around one of the moons of Crusader, and destroying three monitor stations that the hostiles have placed. Since update 3.18 is coming, I wanted to ensure that this mission was doable on the update. And I am pleased to say that the mission is possible even with ships from the pledge packs like the Aurora and the Mustang. The mission on the PTU, however, has been updated and features a lot more hostiles than there were before. But as long as we stick to the three targets that we're here for, which are the three monitor stations, we are there to destroy them. They're stationary. As long as we focus on them, we won't have any trouble. Just keep moving, power to your shields, and just focus on the three targets. And once they're destroyed, head out of the location and accept the mission again to complete it for the second time to accumulate that starting 40,000 AUEC. Do not panic about the hostiles. There will be a few on your overview in 3.18, but they can't really shoot for shit. For the avoidance of doubt, this mission was run on the PTU, and this footage is directly from the PTU, so you can see just how straightforward the mission is. To find the monitor stations that you need to destroy, approach the location once you get to it and use the tab button to scan. You're looking for the little box icon that indicates where the target is. So just approach that target once you find it and have found it via scanning and then destroy it. Don't do what I do, fly directly to it because you very nearly hit it and just end up dead. So just be very cautious, approach it with a bit of less speed than you would do normally and destroy it. You can do this with an Aurora, you can do it with a Mustang, it's a great little mission to get some starting capital. Once you've earned your starting capital, head on over to the Crew L1 station, which is just outside the Crusader area, and set up your respawn point in the medical center when you land there, just in case anything happens. This is handy as well as this station is a refinery station, so we can pick up our initial mining vehicle, the Grey Cat Rock. So once you've set up your respawn point, head on down to the refinery deck using the station elevators, and once you are there, find the refinery admin office. With inside this admin office is a rental terminal where we can pick up the Cutlass Black and the Grey Cat Rock as a rental for a little bit of cash. And we've made that cash already so we can rent them from this terminal and we are then able to proceed with mining. At this time, however, though, there is a bug with the terminals, so do ensure you only rent the Grey Cat Rock and the Cutlass Black for just one day only. If you rent it for the longer terms, it probably won't let you as you won't have the cash anyway, but if you look at it, you'll notice that the amounts it says are actually nothing compared to what it actually is for the term you select. So just pick one day, rent them out, and get going. Now that you've rented your Cutlass Black and the Rock, you'll need to head over to Daymar, where we will be mining for today. Daymar is best as a new player to learn the ropes as the weather and its planet stability is suitable and you don't need any extra protection to go there. For more experienced users, you can head over to Aberdeen with a Pembroke suit to protect you from the elements and mine there, which is in Hurston. Aberdeen is said to have a better ratio of Hadonite deposits, which is what we'll be mining for on Daymar. And once you leave the Cruel 1 station, you can set your destination to Daymar and head on over there. I tend to find it's best to set the destination once I've left the no-fly zone from Cruel 1 station as it can sometimes bug the navigation and it'll think the station is actually a point along the destination route. Once you've arrived at Daymar, head on down to the Shubin Mining Facility, SCD-1, and at this mining facility you'll find a blue Platinum Bay building and launch pad next to it. In this little blue building is an ASOP terminal where you can go and summon your Grey Cat Rock, but you'll need to claim it first time round once you've rented one. Once you've spawned it, head on outside and you will be able to get on board your rock and move it to your Cutlass's hangar. You can make it flight ready, just like flying, using the R button and then move it using your control keys. So now we want to go mining. So first of all, we need to find gems to do this. We're going to be mining gemstones, specifically Hadonite. I recommend you pop up to the OM1 marker, though you don't have to. You can just literally pick any point of interest on the planet 
fly to it and then head off in a random direction and search for min mineable gems. The joy with the OM1 marker is that when you fly up to this and then fly down to the planet, if you head up to the right hand side, you'll literally be in daytime and you will be in daytime for a longer period of time. Not just this, Hadenite gems generally spawn around mountain ranges, so you'll literally find that there is a mountain range at the OM1 poles, so you can fly on down and head towards the mountain range and start looking for Hadenite gems there and then. So to begin with, you need to know how to scan. So we do a scan by hitting the tab button. That will send out a ping to the literal area and it will scan the area for gems, ore deposits and whatnot else. You can adjust the scan angle using the comma and period keys. Now, I recommend you set this to 90 degrees because the idea here is, is that you're going to travel in one direction in literally just one direction. So if it's set to 90 degrees, it will scan it at a 90 degree angle from your cursor's location. So as we're going forward, you will literally scan the area in front of you. As you proceed to start scanning, you're looking out for the little HUD icon that will appear as you find ore deposits and gems. Now, ore deposits will appear the furthest away. They can spawn on your, on your HUD from 6 kilometers to 10 kilometers, but you can also find the gemstones, which is what we're after, that will spawn anywhere from 1 to 5 kilometers usually, like this one that just appeared on the left-hand side here. So once you've found these ones, these are the ones you're after, ones that spawn on your HUD within 5,000 uh, 5, kilometers, you'll want to head over to them. But, if the cluster is three or less for Hadma, I wouldn't even bother because you want to make sure that you are spending your time valuably. And with Hadma being the most valuable gem that we can mine at 275 AUEC per unit, it's worth making sure you focus on that. But you can mine absolutely anything you want, but if you're mining Amorphorite or Dolivine, I wouldn't recommend stopping for anything less than a five cluster deposit as it simply isn't worth your time. Gemstone deposits can spawn anywhere from one deposit up to 14 deposits on one patch. Obviously, the more the better. The best way to approach this is literally head in one direction, pick a heading from your heading icon at the top, pick a number and just move in that direction until you find something. Like this patch here that spawned on the right hand side, this patch here turned into be about a six or seven cluster, which was fantastic for this example. Of course, before we set down to mine it, we just need to find out what it is. So we're gonna initiate the scan mode by pressing V and then getting close enough so we can just check with the contents of the actual gemstone deposit. We do that by just holding left mouse click while it scans and you can see on the left display it's coming up with all the information and then on the right hand side it will display the actual content. So in this case we were lucky enough to find Hadonite. So now we've found a Hadonite cluster we need to set this ship down and get the rock out so we can commence with our mining session. With the rock out of the cutlass you are now in a position to mine so we need to enable the mining mode but first make sure you get the rock into a decent position so you can actually mine multiple rocks just moving around. Yeah but, well it's easy enough to do Bit of a pain in the ass so get into a good position and then activate your mining mode with the m button and then to activate the laser we just left click to up the power we need to do the mouse wheel up to up the power to lower the power we just do mouse wheel down that controls up and down on the laser's power the idea of the game here is to make sure that we are getting the power level to the optimal area which is the green zone below the overcharge zone we do not want to go into overcharge because any overcharge risks not only hurting us, but also scattering your gems further away uh, or just literally blowing up the rock so you don't get any contents or a reduced amount because you overcharged it. So just keep it within the green optimal charge zone and the bar will fill up. Once it fills up to the maximum fill, the gem will explode and then that is then ready to collect. But what I would recommend you do is just take the time to mine the entire patch mine each single gem before you start extracting any ore at all. What you might find if you come along a massive cluster or like a 14 pack, you might find as you open all the gems your FPS might take a little hit because there's just so much on the floor, but of course this is an alpha game, alpha has bugs, it is what it is. With the last rock mind you can now start to collect your deposits so you'll need to initiate the extraction mode by using the right click button which will change the laser mode and then just left click to initiate the laser again what you'll want to do is hold the laser in position over a cluster of the gems that are iconed on the, the actual ground of the planet now you've cracked all the deposits as you do so after a second or two it will start extracting now what i tend to find is once they're actually starting to extract into the laser i can move the mouse ever so gently around the deposits and it keeps a steady 
steady flow of the gems coming into the actual extraction laser. But what you might find is it flies a, f a couple off like this. It is completely up to you whether you take the time to collect a single gem that has been flung away. Honestly, the time it takes to do so really isn't worth doing if you, you're going to get the odd one fling far away. That's just the nature of this game mode at this time. I do think they need to work on the extraction of the lasers on the rock, but that of course will come in the future. There's no special art to collecting the gems, literally once you've picked them all up, that is the mining session complete. Get the rock back into the cutlass and you can get on the way to finding another rock cluster. At this point in time, you have now passed basic training for acquiring, using and profiting in a rock. But before you get too carried away, I wanted to give you an example of what happens when you overcharge a rock. So I've just blown up the first rock here in this patch and you can see that the little packet of gems spawned literally around the gem bone deposit. But if you overcharge the rock even slightly, they kind of go everywhere. Once you've filled up your rock to max capacity, I highly recommend you head over to Port Olazar, which is in the same area as Crusader, and land at Port Olazar, which is an orbital station around the planet itself. Once you're there, you can sell your gems for a profit. So we're going to jump over there now. It's literally a hop, skip, and a jump away. Once you're there, land is normal, and then you'll want to head inside and find the admin office. But before you find the admin office, you'll want to use the ASOP terminals first to store your ship. This will ensure that the materials that you have taken time to collect are stored safe and cannot be destroyed or lost. You don't have to use Port Olazar either. You can go to anywhere that has an admin office. I simply prefer Port Olazar as I can refuel here. I can also eat and drink. And the admin office is literally right next to the ASOP terminals. All you need to do is access the trading console, click on the cell tab, select the Grey Cat rock from the source location, and then the hand knight there will be available to sell. Click on it. Scroll up how many you want to sell, and you can see in this case we've made 223,000, which is great. And ideally we want to be achieving this within an hour of gameplay, but of course RNG is RNG, and you really cannot trust the Haddonite clusters to spawn when you want them to. So it might take longer, it might take less. So now you know how to start your mining career in the Grey Cat Rock in Star Citizen. You can use the rock to earn 2.2 million AUEC to purchase the Prospector, the next ship in the mining progression tree. And I dare say now that you would like to know more about the Prospector, and why wouldn't you, with massive earnings being possible with the Prospector alone? You'll want to watch this next video I've made to learn everything about the Prospector that you'll need to know to mine efficiently with it, so be sure to watch that next. Thanks for watching my video, and please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the verse.